Do you ever feel stuck like you're living your life on autopilot? Are you ready to shift into high gear and reach the success you so richly deserve? Welcome to the Play Big Movement podcast. I am your host, Sharon Lecter, entrepreneur, business strategist, and best-selling author. Playing big is not about settling for good enough or being comfortable. It is about reaching your highest potential and achieving your greatest success. Join me in my Play Big Movement as I interview top experts in business, money, and entrepreneurship, all ready to serve you and to help you play big, be number one in your field, live your legacy, and create maximum impact. Welcome back to the Play Big Movement podcast. I'm very excited today because one of my favorite people on earth is my guest, Mr. David Corbin. Welcome, David. Well, thank you. Favorite person. I'm honored there. Yes, you are. And always with a smile, always makes me smile. So those people that just bring you up a notch in energy and in happiness. And David, you, you light up every room that you walk into. So let me do the official intro because David has so many things. His bio is kind of like mine. It's kind of lots of different things, and he's an expert at everything he does. But he's been uh, well-known as an international keynote speaker, goes all over. He's a mentor, business advisor. He's, he's been a mentor and advisor to very top level, top fortune 20 companies, as well as many entrepreneurs just starting off and getting kicked out you know, into the real world and helping them guide their pathway. Um, I, I love this. I hadn't known this before, David, when I got your intro. He's been referred to as the Robin Williams with an MBA <laughs> because of this very practical, high, relevant content coupled with entertaining and sometimes side-splitting stories. I can attest to all of those attributes. Um, you know, I've known David for, I don't know, how 10 years, 10 plus years now. And um, seen a, we've both had a lot of things happen to us in our lives and, and all moving and taking those in stride and going to the next level. And he has been a steadfast champion for me and for the work that I do, and I likewise for him. So, David, thanks so much for being on the podcast today. And actually, you were, I was just thanking him because I did my very first private Facebook podcast this morning, and he was there and added his little pearl of wisdom about, uh, you know, living your legacy. So, thanks so much for being with me, David. Um, I'm pleased. You're a, you're a dear friend, and any way I can uh, support you in your mission fulfills my mission, which is to assist in the development and the equipoise growth of everyone, particularly and especially in the area of entrepreneurship, which you know we we are so joined in. You know, absolutely. So this whole the my initiative for the Play Big movement, of course. Um, as you know, you're well aware that I lost my son five and a half years ago. And I last year, I was actually starting to think about retiring because I've been kind of putting my life, my life was kind of in autopilot and neutral. And I had always played big in my life before that. I you know always strove for the bigger game and the bigger partner. And, um, and then I kind of just let my existing business carry me through. Luckily, I was blessed to have have a lot of things coming to me, but I kind of shift from being very proactive to being reactive. And um, when I started to retire, I got a little pushback from my friends and family and actually a little pushback from, I think, my son from above. And so I kind of said, you know, I I can't stay in neutral anymore. I've got to get out there and work hard. And I think I still have more work to do. And so you actually were there when I, one of the first uh, talks I gave at Secret Knock related to this new initiative, the Play Big Movement, and it stands for being number one in your field, living your legacy, and mm-hmm. creating maximum impact. And if there's anyone that I think that that defines, I have a, quite a few friends that I think fall into that category, but certainly, David, you are one because not only – are you creating your own legacy? But you look for the, the beauty of er, inside everyone you meet. So talk a little bit about what that play big movement means to you. Well, I do look for the beauty uh, in everyone that I meet. Um, God don't make no mistakes. 
And, um, and so there's always, there's always beauty in that. Sometimes it's hard to see the beauty in some, but, but just like the little boy uh, in that big pile of pony poop, he knows there's a pony in there somewhere. And I do love to see the genius, the beauty, the love within, within other individuals. Again, some it's very easy, some it's not so easy. But you know, as it relates to playing big, I can't imagine playing bigger than that, which is to help to build and fortify individuals to achieving their destiny um, and create their legacy. Certainly, yes, but create their destiny. You know, the army says, be all that you can be. Um, I say, be all that you can be. And so being a mentor is a part of that process and, it is amazing. It's amazing. I mean, I, I pinch myself that um, I get to do the work that I do. Living big, and, and we'd have to define what big is uh, together. I saw your definition, and I couldn't agree more. And I would add things like um, my friend Mitch Axelrod talks about soul, role, and goal. Living big is getting in touch with your soul. Who are you? What are you about? What lights you up, etc.? Get in touch with the body temple. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> wow. Um, and then set your role and then set your goal. So um, I'm excited about your bigness and, and propagating that bigness. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool. And that's where you and I are. You know, they say brothers from another mother. What do we say? What are we? We're brother and sister from another mister. I don't know. Yeah. But we're certainly united in that. Yes, we are. And uh, and totally champions for each other. And um, and I think we have the, a similar mission in, in helping people discover not only their own brilliance, but how they can share that with others. Um, you know, I think you may be one of the people I quote most often, you don't know this, in many of my speeches because of uh, one of your initial books. And I really love the, your philosophy. And for everybody watching, you know, we all, every one of us has stuff happen to us. Mm -hmm. And um, it's how we deal with it, how we learn from it, how we recover from it. And David, you talk about illuminating the negative. So can you share a little bit about your thoughts about that? Because it's such an important message. And it's something that uh, you, do, you do it so beautifully that I, I quote you because I think it's a very impactful way of talking about it. Well, thank you. It, yeah, I mean, I, I write books about things that I think are most important. Um, or I wouldn't write books about them, right? And um, one of them is the concept of, you know, we can't solve everything that we face, but we can't solve anything unless we face it. And what does that mean? You know, things come down at us. A lot of people go into denial. It's almost a natural tendency to have defense mechanisms, you know, to kind of hide away from it. But eventually we realize it's more important that rather than we put it in the dark, that actually we pick it up, we shine the light on it, we illuminate it, and we face it. We face it, and then we follow it, uh, and then we fix it. Not just that which happens to us in life, such as the loss of a loved one, the loss of a, of a job or a business or a limb or a friendship or whatever, but anything and everything that happens to us, I believe is a gift um, and it doesn't feel that way all the time. But when you look at it that way and you unpack it and you illuminate it, instead of repressing, denying or keeping it in the dark, life is uh, much bigger. Um, yeah, and, and I'll say this, the energy it takes to hold these things down out of our conscious awareness, the energy it takes to repress it and defend against it is much more than the energy of dealing with it. Oh, it takes energy to deal with it, but I promise you it's more energy holding it down. So that's what it illuminates about. Along that line, I think, you know, what triggered the thought is I talk to people um, so many times we carry on grudges. You may have an, a problem with someone and and they 
they're over it, they keep going, and you are harboring them, and you're keeping that inside, like you're saying, tapping that down instead of, and you just make yourself sick, and you become your own worst enemy because you're allowing it to eat away, to, away at you, and eventually the way it materializes is health issues, um, oh, yeah. ability to sleep, you age, um, all of those things, and it's something that um, you, as you, as I say often, you can't change someone else, you can just change how you react to them, and you need to recognize when you are harboring and letting something like that fester to let it out. So illuminating to yourself what you're holding on to is an important step. I ask people to do an audit and go inside and audit. Ask yourself, what is it that I'm not facing that if I did might set me free? People come up with, yeah, anger and resentment the lack of forgiveness of others and of self. Mm -hmm. And yes, those things gone on over time manifest in dis-ease. It's difficult and it is dis-ease. And so, um, yeah, when you do that audit, I think audits are so important. Now, you know, I mentioned to you before we went on air that I completed my tax um, responsibilities today and met with my tax attorney, an amazing guy, retired Air Force colonel, an enrolled agent to the IRS. He's brilliant. We go through the process. We kibitz. We have a good time. It's good closure. I like to have that closure. We, 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 we want to deal with these things and put them aside for when we do, <clears throat> I believe our self-esteem goes up. <clears throat> How do I mean? That this is called the law of gravity <laughs> it's not it's it's an immutable law and there's another law called the law of control and the law of control is as immutable and permanent as the law of gravity it says we feel good about ourselves our self-esteem is tied to our being in control of our destiny within reason because there's others in control of our destiny too right but within control of our destiny and so as we close gaps as we confront as we illuminate, it's amazing. Our self-esteem goes up. Our confidence goes up. Our competence goes up. And instead of going down the rabbit hole, no, no, no. We're climbing up the vortex to greatness in living that, in living that big life. So when, you, when you're sharing this with audience, I, my guess is there's probably going to be people in there that go like easy for him to say, and you can actually see by their body language that what you're, <laughs> what you're saying they are not hearing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so how, give us a little in-your-face feedback to those people that are maybe watching or listening right, right now that might well, be rolling their eyes. <laughs> I've got nothing because I was born with a silver spoon. I've never had any adversity. My, my adversity, my life has been perfect as I sit here with a full head of hair Oh, wait a minute. That's someone else. Never mind. Take that back. Yeah. Life happens. Life happens. You know, my magnificent granddaughter, I'm looking at a picture of my granddaughter, and my grandson. There's my Libby and there's my Eitan. My Libby was born of my son, Benjamin, and my daughter-in-law, Lila. When Benjamin, before Benjamin was born, while my wife was pregnant, my business came to a standstill and then went off the cliff and was spiraling out of control. A business that I built from with a hundred dollar investment uh, up until offices in the 14 Western states and doing a lot of business. I invented the military suppliers got it. It was an incredible business. I was boy wonder. It was, wow, look at me, look at me with my partners, Mark and Bill. And well, and then it was going to boom, come to a crunch. The bank was calling in a note. I was the deepest pocket of the partners and the home I'm in right now was going to be taken away from me. My wife was pregnant. I couldn't tell her, because she was pregnant and we had already had a couple of miscarriages, which were also a lot of fun. I mean, yeah, life happens. Happily, happily, I was able to build the business a little bit, sell the business to Bertelsmann who came in and bought 
Doubleday Books, Phantom Books, Dell Books, RCA Records, Arista Records, and my company. I had to stay on as president, which wasn't great. But the point is, it was so scary that when I would think about it, it would turn my stomach. And I couldn't share it. I couldn't share it with, with my wife. So, yeah, I mean, life's easy peasy. Now. You know, you live and you learn. It was a gift. Oh, my God, it was a gift. I mean, it didn't feel like a gift, but it was a gift. And... Um, when I illuminated that, which I didn't understand the concept of illuminate back then, I didn't know the concept of mentoring. I just knew John Wayne, rugged individualist, boom, make it happen. Well, I learned A, mentoring. B, I told myself, geez, I really don't have the time to do all these things. No, I didn't have the talent to do these things. I didn't face the fact that in certain areas of my business, I was impotent. I didn't have what it took. So now I teach illuminate the core job functions of your business. Illuminate the core job functions of your life, your relationships, your love, your faith, your family, your financial, your free illuminate on a scale of one to 10, take measurement, close gaps, invoke that law of control. And uh, so the lesson I learned there was, oh, my God, mentorship, number one. Number two, see what you're good at and close the gaps of what you're not good at. I mean, all of those things, which I teach and I believe. Why? Because I wasn't born with that silver spoon. I have fallen on my head. Knock my toupee off. I'll never find it. <laughs> that's, that's life. That's growth. That's development. And when I share that with people, I don't get those, you know, it's easy for him to say. Mm -hmm. They either know that of me or they believe that of me and we resonate and they get, this guy's not talking from a book. He's talking from the book of life, mm -hmm. from the school of hard knocks, from the school of love and opportunity and collaboration and whatnot. And I, I predict that at some point in time, Sharon Lecter and David Corbin are going to be traveling around the world sharing ideas of entrepreneurship in developing nations. I predict that. I hope for that, and I predict that, because our messages fall on the hearts of the individuals who have hope and dream. And when we can give them the inspiration and the tools, our legacy is set in platinum. Well, I Just love that thought, and I would welcome the opportunity, because I do believe that we are... Um, definitely uh, a powerhouse when we work together individually as well. But I think I would welcome that opportunity, Mr. Corbin. It would be an honor and a privilege to work You heard it here, folks. You heard it first right here. <laughs> well, for those of you watching, I want to just remind you some of the things, you know, David's talking about so, such an important concept of, um, and I love the illuminating the negative, right? And um, you can't deal with it if you don't recognize it and, and fix it. You know, I love the follow it and fix it um, analogy. But also, he talked about control. Now, I've talked to you all before about being a control freak. I am a control freak. But there is a positive side to being in control because, as I say, you are the CEO of your own life. And when you are in control, and just as a simple thing as a checking off your to-do list, accomplishing those things gives you that self-confidence to keep going. And, in fact, I just this morning was talking to my team. I said, you know, I, I just recognize in myself I'm in this, like, little bit of a self-sabotage thing that I'm mm -hmm. kind of – putting off things I know I need to get done. And it's like, this is odd. I have to look at that. I'm using this weekend to uh, analyze myself. Why am I doing this? Because mm -hmm. it's so unlike me. Mm -hmm. But all of us, we go through these times in our life and being in control is an important thing. You know, you can go too far because then you close out the possibility of learning and having other opportunities come from you. But those are just brilliant concepts, David. I'm going to invite David and we're going to do an additional little recording for those of you that are in our private Facebook group, the Play Big Movement Facebook with Sharon Lecter. And I invite you, if you're not a member of that already, to do that because that's where we actually are going to go a little layer, a little deeper with David about his own personal issues and things that he's faced as well as his you know, advice for, for each of us. And I think it's important 
And David, I'm going to ask you to kind of wind up with a little bit of advice for everybody that's watching here. But, um, you know, we live in a world where people are waiting for others to hand them things and do things for them so many times and people miss out on an opportunity because they don't place themselves in a position of maximum potential. So from a standpoint of uh, the you know, tidbit of advice for you, for someone who know, probably knows what they're supposed to do, but they're not doing it, mm. what would you say to them? <clears throat> well, uh, unfortunately, that characteristic of knowing uh, and not doing is common amongst all of us. Then there's knowing before doing. I like to believe that everyone who's watching and listening has that knowing before doing. Don't give yourself the curse of, man, I know it and I'm not doing it and shame on me. No, there's always that lag time. Wouldn't it be nice if we can compress the distance between knowing and doing? I mean, I knew I should quit smoking cigarettes 20 years before I took action, right? I knew I should not eat these certain things or eat late at night before I took action. And what I find is, is when you start compressing the knowing and doing component, you're smarter. You see, smart is not SATs or MCATs or boards. No, no, no. Smart is not even a way of thinking. It's a way of doing. Everything that you do that moves you in the direction of your desired life equals smart. <laughs> Everything that moves you away from it equals stupid. So when you can compress the time between knowing and doing, you get smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter. You start feeling better about yourself and all that sort of stuff. So what I like to do is I really do like to take inventory of all aspects of my life, what makes me happy, what brings me passion, what brings me joy, etc. And I ask myself, what am I doing that's moving, moving me in the direction of that? And what's moving you away from that? And I always accentuate the positive, yay, where I'm moving in the direction, and I illuminate the negative, oh, I see, eating chips before going to bed or whatever moves me away. Make a list of that. Put it in front of you. As the Old Testament says, bind it as a sign upon your doorpost and upon your hand that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your might. Well, bind this in front of you, like our friends put mission boards and vision boards, and look at what you're doing that you want to applaud, but look at some of those things that you want to get rid of. Incrementally eliminate some of those Watch what happens. Wow, watch what happens. Look, we come into this plane with big, three big stupid lies. One is we're separate from source, really. Number two is we are in total control of our destiny. We're not, but we want to take as much as we can. And number three is we're not good enough. Lie, lie, lie. So when you close those gaps, feel good about yourself, do smart things, and lead the big life that Sharon talks about. Oh my goodness, David, I think that's fantastic. And I'm going to encourage everyone listening and watching to just hit rewind and listen again to the, these pearls of wisdom. Cause I mean, David, you're just, you, you hit it kind of right, the nail right on the head. And I think I love the, the last three comments because it really is, you know, there, we are not separate from source and we are not in control of our destiny. We can steer the ship we're on um, but we can't necessarily control the, 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 the sea. We need to be able to learn how to navigate. And uh, I just, I, I wholly, I just so wholeheartedly thank you for being with us today. And David, tell people, everyone listening and watching how they can find you. Um, I'm right over here. <laughs> right over here, davidcorbin.com. And for friends of friends, I always give out my email address, and that's david at davidcorbin.com. And a dear, dear friend of mine, and thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. And stay tuned, because he's going to come into another session with me that's going to be available in the private Facebook group, Play Big Movement with Sharon Lecter. Thank you, David. Love you. Love you, too. Thank you for listening to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. Please subscribe to iTunes and leave us a review, as well as join us in other areas of social media, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, at Sharon Lecter, and for Facebook, author Sharon Lecter. Thank you so much and have a fabulous day.